Welcome to Table Bible Talk with Pastor Larry Lilly and myself, Pastor David Ray. We are delighted to be able to spend this time with you again on this great Wednesday night. And we are thankful for Kingdom Purpose Television and Bishop Vernon Matthews. Before we go to reading from John chapter 2, beginning reading at verse 18, Pastor Larry Lilly is going to pray. We thank you, God, for another evening here on Kingdom Purpose Television. We're yes. thankful, God, for the study in the book of John, chapter 2. Yes. And we're thankful, oh God, for what you're doing through this study, oh God. You're helping people, but you're also helping us as well. We pray, God, that many will be touched by the word of God that will be spoken this evening concerning John. God, we just thank you for your glory and your praise for all that you're doing through this kingdom purpose television. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I just wanted to add, as before we do read, we're celebrating this month. Pastor Larry Lilly has been with Growing Together Ministry two years putting up with me. And I'm so thankful for Pastor Larry Lilly. Pastor, go right ahead. Ready? ready? We're ready. All right. John chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign do you show us, seeing that you do these things? This concerns itself with the opposition, which would only grow in intensity. The opposition to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The proper translation here, what sign do you show unto us that you are the Messiah? Seeing that, you do these things. Pastor Larry, concerning that? You know, there are people that will not accept anything unless you can prove it to them. They wanted proof. They would not accept the fact that he was the Messiah. And and, and so, you know, we, we we all deal with this at times in our life. We have issues sometimes walking by faith. Yes. Walking, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's good, it's natural to, to feel it or to touch it. It's natural to see it with our eyes or hear it. Well, I can hear the, wind, the, the results of the wind blowing, yes. but I've never seen the wind. But I know it's there. Yes. But, but the, these Jews could not accept the fact that this was the Messiah. They wanted a sign. Yes. And many people today, Pastor, they're wanting evidence yes. of being able to see instead of a sign that he is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith. And this here teaches us that we are to walk by faith, as Pastor Larry Lilly profoundly has spoken this. Is there anything here on verse 18 to add? Well, this is not, it's not so much on verse 18, but for what was happening here in John. I was thinking on this today. That you know, remember when God first called you into your, your ministry, or you in your ministry, yeah. called us or to do something specifically for God, and how excitement and how much zeal we had. Well, this was the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. Yes. He's already done one miracle. He already turned water into wine. You know, we studied that a few weeks ago. Right. The, the great miracle. And so they, they've already seen this. But this is the beginning of oppositions of many that Jesus and the disciples would face through the three and a half years of ministry. Look at the oppositions that we have faced, and I have faced, you have faced in your walk with God yes. from people. Well, I don't think God would tell you to do that. Or uh, are you sure you're in the will of God? Uh, yes. Are you sure that's where God sent you? 
And so we even today face oppositions in carrying Amen. out the will of the Father. Amen. And Jesus' purpose was to carry out the will of his Father, and he will not allow anything to hinder that will to be done. That's when he even rebuked Peter, Peter later on. Peter tried to get in the way. Amen. So, Pastor, what you're saying is that we as individuals must be determined to carry out the will of the Father, the, of the Word of God, and by faith keep moving on even when people question yes. our integrity, they question our relationship with the Father. Yes, yes. Amen. I believe that is so powerful here in John chapter 2, verse 18. Yes. We hit Pastor. Verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Looking back at this, it's referred to his physical body not the structure built by her. Pastor, any thoughts there on his physical body? It, right. Anytime that he mentioned that he would he would raise it up in three days. Yes. They always thought he was talking about the physical temple where they went to worship. But he was talking about his flesh. Yes. You destroy this flesh in three days, it's going to come back. And that's exactly what happened when he was, when he was crucified. Three days, he resurrected back. From grave. So at this point, in John chapter 2, verse 19, he was preparing them for what would happen. And he was trying to get people to listen. Yes. And that's what we're doing pastor larry right. we're trying to get people to listen to the word of god because we have a soon coming king and the other part here he speaks of his resurrection and exactly when it would be three days after his death yes yes and, you know, even three days after his resurrection, and when the women came to the tomb and found that he was missing or he wasn't there. Yes. In one conversation, he was standing outside. And when they went back and told the disciples, they didn't want to believe it. They didn't want, you know, even though he had, and, you know, you preached a word, you Glory. men and women of God. And we preach the word that's at this table tonight. Yes. That Jesus is coming back. You need to get your heart right. With Glory. God. But yet people said, no, nah, I've got plenty of time. He's not coming back soon. He's not coming. You know, yes. it's just, you know they, they've been speaking these things for thousands of years. That's true. But he's coming. And it's getting so much so close to the coming of the Lord. And so he was carrying. He, he was speaking the word here. I'll, I'll, raise, I'll raise his body back up in three days. That's exactly what happened. Life came back to it. Amen. And the witness is the word of God that you're reading with us right now. You are watching Kingdom Purpose Television on this great Wednesday night with Pastor Larry and I'm Pastor David. And we're with you at 8.30 p.m. every Wednesday night, Eastern Time. And we're so glad. You're with us tonight. And continue, Pastor. Verse 20 was what we've been discussing a little bit earlier. This is what it says. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building. And will you rear it up in three days? Yes. What a question. The last statement is spoken in sarcasm. Yes. He said, you did shot. Destroy this temple, I will raise it in three days. They were looking in the natural. Yes. 
they were looking to this building that was being that was that was built. It took 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it up in three days. Yeah. Even if the temple was Preach. destroyed, Jesus can still raise it up in three days. Hallelujah. He can put uh, mortar to mortar, block to block, uh, board to board, or whatever it takes Glory. to put the building back in order. Because he, because he can do anything and everything. Yes, and we need to stop looking so much at the physical, Pastor, and look at the spiritual. Yes. What is not seen glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is what is in voice. Exactly. Verse 21. But he spoke of the temple of his body. This is said after the fact. However, when he originally made this statement, more than likely, he pointed to his body. But still, they would not have under stood his meaning. Amen. So in, in his gesture, if you can see my hands, he said, destroy this body in three days and I'll raise it back up. Yes. But they still look in the national, at the, at the, the building. Sometimes we look in, in something so narrow, like a, like a horse's bridle. A horse's bridle will keep you looking to the left to the right. You just have to look straight ahead. And they were so narrow-minded looking on that, at the, at that one building, they really was not comprehending what he was actually saying. Yes. And I think here in verse 21, we need to keep in mind as believers, we are the temple. Yes. We are the temple of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we need to be careful as believers with our temple. And I just, go ahead. The only one that can take care of your temple is you. Preach, pastor. Not your wife, not the first lady of your church. Yes. Uh, not the deacons. You are responsible for your temple. I am responsible responsible for my temple. Glory. Amen. And sometimes, uh, we're Pentecostal. Sometimes we Pentecostals get caught up on, on uh, things like alcohol, cigarettes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's other things that they destroy the temple. Oh, yes. And so we are responsible. And, and I'm not here to name this, 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 this. You know what I'm talking about, who, whoever's watching tonight. Yes. We are responsible to God of taking care of this temple. Just as we take care of the physical building, this tabernacle that we're in, we're in actually in the sanctuary part of our tabernacle tonight. Glory. For this program, uh, this beautiful tabernacle that God so wonderfully blessed us with in our uh, last May of 2021. Anyway, Glory. beautiful tabernacle. We want to take care of it. We want to vacuum the carpet. We want to clean the bathrooms. Uh, and, do, and any repairs that need to be done, make sure it's, it's first class. Yes. Amen. Same thing with this temple. Are we taking care of our temple? Are we getting the proper rest? Come on. Are we eating the right foods? Yes. Are we drinking the right liquids for the body? So, uh, take Jesus took care of his temple. Yes. Physical temple, as well as when he went to, to, to uh, we discussed last week, how he threw the money changers out of the temple because they were defacing the temple of God. And so, my point in closing here is, of this part is take care of your temple. Lord, Lord. Verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. They were realizing that it referred to his death and resurrection and not the temple built by Herod. Perhaps they were referring here to Psalm 1610. A divine faith is always based on the scripture. Pastor, could you look at Psalm 1610, please? And let's go there. Psalms chapter 16, verse 10. 
And we're in John chapter 2, verse 22 of our study of the gospel of John on this kingdom purpose television Wednesday night. Psalm 1610 says, For you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. The notes there, Pastor. Pertains to paradise and not the burning side of hell, as some teach. Jesus never went to that place. The latter part of the of, uh, notes. Christ saw no corruption in the gra- in the grave, simply because he atoned for all sin. Therefore, there was no doubt about him being raised from the dead. Yes. And we all must believe. The scripture. Yes, yes. We must read the scripture daily. We must verbally quote the scripture daily. And we must pray daily. And our faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will increase. Verse 23, Pastor. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover on the feast day, Many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. It speaks of the same time in which he had cleansed the temple. Pastor speaks some on this cleansing of the temple. Cleansing the temple was when he went out there and run those that were gambling at the doorstep of the temple. He cleaned it out. And that's what we do with our word. The word of God cleanses the temple, if you will. Lord. Those that's in the house cleanses this temple. Amen. And, and back to the previous verse, when he, when he made a comment that uh, his fa- his disciples knew which temple he was talking about, that his body, yes. his flesh, the body. And if you are really following Christ into the word of God, then you'll know when God is speaking and when things uh, and when you need to move and do whatever God's called you to do. Yes. The religious leaders, the Jewish leaders, if they were in the if they were spiritual where they should have been, yes, they would have known what, what kind of what temple he was talking about. Yes. But they didn't know. They they think in, in, in the and many unfortunately there are people in our church today look on the the natural side of come opposed on. to the spiritual side. Come on. And then they get confused when the pastor preaches the word of God. That, t- that touches someone else's heart, you know, how can that be? Yes. But anyway, he cleansed the temple. And see, I cannot cleanse your temple and you cannot cleanse my temple. Yes. You can speak a word to me that will jot something in my glory, memory glory. that I need to cleanse my temple. Glory. But I'm the only one, when I say cleanse, it's asking God to come in and cleanse and purify that that's inside of me not right. So, we, as, as Jesus had cleansed that temple and made it right for his people to come to pray to God, we need to keep our temples cleansed daily. Yes. And I, and I draw out from verse 23 of John chapter 2, they believed in his name. That is very powerful also this evening. Do you believe in his name, brothers and sisters that are watching and will listen through podcasts through Growing Together Ministry. Do you believe truly in his name? When you believe in his name, miracles can happen and miracles did happen. Pastor? They believed in his name, the latter part at first, when they saw the miracles. Miracles still happen in the churches today. Glory. Pastor, it was a couple weeks or so ago on a Thursday night that a man's uh, hand got touched. Remember? Glory, yes. Yes. And then there's another man, yes. the, the Sunday before that in church, that got liberty and got free. Amen. And the Hallelujah. Thursday night, the man's hand got healed. The one that said he got free on Sunday gave his heart to God. Glory. That's the miracle. That's that's miracles. And that causes people to believe, amen, 
Uh, yes. if, if they got weak in their faith or they got kind of shallow in their walk with God, that will encourage someone, amen, that, that Hallelujah. Uh, amen, uh, and believe what Jesus is actually saying, amen. They believe when they saw the miracles, they praise God. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God he still does miracles today, praise God. And he's still saving and healing and delivering, amen, and setting free. And I also believe, Pastor, another miracle took place in our, on our this past Sunday service where the man did not, a grown man, had never read the Bible. Yes, sir. He had never read the Bible, and he, he stood up and testified yes. that he now knows how to read the Word of God, Praise a grown God. man. Yes. And he said, I can now follow you because at first, I didn't know what in the world you were doing. You yes. were moving too fast. Yes. But now I can follow, follow you. you. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the acts of the Father are taking place right here in Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Verse 24, Pastor. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Means that he paid little attention to their praises, which were occasioned by the miracles. Their faith was a shallow faith and was routed not necessarily in the scriptures. And I want to stop there. I don't need to have a sign of a miracle. Yes. To know that the Father is real on this Wednesday night. That's right. Pastor Larry does not need a sign or another miracle. As long as we live, we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives right now. And this verse moves in that we need to concentrate more on the scripture then we need to be concentrating on the miracle. Amen, amen, amen. Anything else here? Verse 24, I Pastor. That, concentrating on the word of God. The word, yes. the word of God is what brings the miracle. Yes. Preaching and teaching the word of God brings the miracle. And we're, and we're great when we see that great miracle, that the eyes open or the, or the, the lame walk, and that's great. But we got to focus on the scriptures. The scriptures is what caused that to happen. Amen, Pastor Larry. And we pray tonight that your faith is not misplaced. Yes. Get into the word of God right now. That's why Pastor Larry and myself are going through the gospel of John on this table Bible talk. Because most people are not reading the word of God verse for verse. They're picking a few passages or a few verses from a passage of scripture and that's all they're doing ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters we're going through the gospel of john taking you verse by verse and explaining each verse and this is wonderful and great teaching to the new believer and the believer that is is been in the father for 20 years pastor you know, just reading a little bit here and there is very, very dangerous. I'll give you an example. Preach. I can show you a scripture where it says that Judas went out and hung himself. Oh. Then I can show you another scripture where it Glory. says, go and th do thou likewise. Glory. Now, if you take those scriptures out of context, I'm telling you to go out and commit suicide. So that's why it's important to take every word that's written in the Bible all of it together, not just certain portions out of the context because it'll lead, lead you astray and it'll damn your soul. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor, verse 25. Yes, we ended this tonight. Yes. And needed not that any should testify a man, for he knew that what was in man. It means that he alone properly delivered it the true nature 
of man. The true nature of man. The father knows the inner workings of our life. Amen. Pastor, speak on that. You know, I've known my wife for many, many, many years. We've been married. Yes. And she knows me inside and out. I know her. But I don't know her like Jesus knows her. Preach. And she don't know me like God knows me. He knows every avenue. Hallelujah. Mary Lily, praise God. So no matter how, how much you think you know somebody, Jesus knows you more. He knows everything about you. Any, anything that you have hid, he knows it's there. You can't hide. You might hide it from the pastor. You may hide it from, from someone else in the church or your spouse or, or family member or friend or, or even your boss. But Jesus knows everything. Or he knew what was in man. Amen. John chapter 2 verse 25. He knows our deepest secrets, Amen. what we think and we never speak. This concludes the first two chapters of the Gospel of John. And it has been such a powerful study. In the word of God. I can remember taking the gospel of John. When I was in Bible college in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm learning things now. That I did not learn back in those Bible college days, Pastor. And I trust that when we're with you. Every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You will get your Bible and follow along with us. Pastor Larry, speak to us, buddy, in closing. Amen. We, we're enjoying this. I pray that you are. We love you, even though we might not physically look at you eye to eye, face to face. But we do love you. Hallelujah. And we enjoy doing what we're doing, praise God. Glory. We enjoy coming on here and talking to you through Glory. Kingdom Purpose Television. And we look forward to next week. Next week will be in chapter three. We're going to talk about Nicodemus, Pastor, next week. And we're Hallelujah. looking forward, amen, to uh, meeting with you again one week from tonight, Wednesday night, next week. Uh, we'll see you again on this program. At 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, have a great Kingdom Purpose Television Wednesday night. This is Pastor Larry Lilly. I'm Pastor David Ray. We love you and the Father loves you.